Hello, this is Laura Lee Rose, and I'm a speaker and author of the books Time Peace, Making Peace with Time, and the Book of Answers, 105 Business Critical Situations and Their Solutions. Over the past several months, I have freely shared my social media and networking tips in a few quick videos. I have developed It's a Snap, the social networking assistant process system for entrepreneurs and coaches. I designed and facilitated a three-day teleseminar, Light Your Fuse, for coaches to speak about their products and services. My radio show regularly interviews small business owners and highlights their products and services. Since then, I have received several follow-up questions about how small business owners can better succeed. I have bundled some of these questions into this quick video on the three dangerous trends smart business owners face that drain their time, energy, and profits. But before we start, I want to tell you a little bit about myself. I help busy professionals and entrepreneurs create effective systems so that they can comfortably delegate to others, be more profitable, and have time to enjoy life even if they don't have the time to learn new technology or train their staff. I have a knack for turning big ideas into on-time and profitable projects. Okay, so what do I really do? Well, I mostly listen. I listen to how you currently run your business. I listen to how you want your business to actually run. Then I get you from point A to point B. All of our businesses are made of various pieces and you already have many of the right pieces. What I do is to get all the pieces working together and fitting seamlessly through some processes and strategies. Sometimes it's just a matter of using your resources a little differently. Resources in this case could be tools, equipment, staff, or anything you use to get the job done. We are all very busy and our time is valuable, so let's get right to it. The three dangerous trends smart business owners face that drain their time, energy, and profits are creating to-do lists, deliberately separating business and family activities, and doing the things that made them successful in the first place. The to-do list is the death of the small business owner. Our to-do list often has a mixture of little tasks and big picture goals. There's nothing on that list that we cannot do ourselves. Yet, we often feel overwhelmed when we continue to review and add to the list. The act of constantly prioritizing the backlog is relentless as it is useless. Since the list is constantly changing, the things that you thought were important yesterday may not be important today. So the act of prioritizing the list is ineffective. We often get so frustrated that we lose or rip up the current list and start all over again. While ripping up the list does provide a temporary relief, it doesn't really help move us forward in our business. And because we're so overloaded with the busy, tedious daily activities, we don't have the space or freedom to execute on our exciting, bigger plans. We will now talk about some typical to-do items that actually sabotage us. Hiring a virtual assistant. This is often a small business owner's first hiring thought. Our top of mind problem is the overload of emails and phone calls that we have to return. We see that our emails and inboxes are getting out of hand. So we mentally identify the solution, just hire a virtual assistant. And we put that on our to-do list. Since we don't have the time to create a job posting, write out a job description, review resumes or interview, that item stays on the to-do list gathering dust while we continue to drown in our customer correspondence duties. The second new hire that we may consider is a customer service agent or help desk assistant. We often realize that we need to continue to generate leads and follow up on those leads. We may decide that we need assistance on collecting client names, follow up calls, staying in contact with our current clients. 
We realize that there's not enough of us to entice new clients and maintain the clients that we already have. So we add hire a customer service agent to help us grow our company. The problem with this is the same as the previous hire a virtual assistant. We wait until we have the time and money to hire those people. But we really haven't actually budgeted for new staff. We probably don't have a budget identified in general. Therefore, when we decide to rent some office space, we tell ourselves, well, since we've got that new expense, we can't hire right now. Or since we spent money on traveling to this marketing and training event this month, we need to wait to hire staff right now. If these thoughts sound familiar, it means that you don't have a realistic company budget in place. Reality is that current normal expenses should not really have an effect on your staffing goals. Because you don't have a realistic company budget in place, whenever you look at these to-do items, you're unclear on what the next steps would be. Because you're unclear about your budget, you postpone action yet again. The last typical sabotage to-do item is the frustrated note of, there's got to be a better way. While this is a truism, it doesn't get us any closer to a solution. It's vague and ambiguous. To be able to move forward, we need to start speaking in a more specific or smart language. The smart language is a way to properly identify your to-do items in order to take effective action. SMART stands for specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. Let's take an example. Hire a virtual assistant. The SMART language in hiring a virtual assistant would include a specific job description or a list of what you want them to do. How many hours do you want them to work and how much are you going to pay them? Are you being realistic in your requirements and compensation? Do you need them to already know your business? If not, do you have the processes, systems, documentation, and training in place to get them up to speed quickly? When do you need them to start? And when are you going to hire them? Okay, now that we know that the problem is the to-do list, what is the solution? The simple solution to the to-do list dilemma is the calendar. Once you have described your next steps in your smart language, do not place them on your to-do list. Instead, put them in your calendar. For example, the action that you want to solve is there's got to be a better way. The first step is to schedule time on your calendar to determine your budget for a system business expert or coach. The second step is to schedule a discovery call with a systems business expert. Directly put these things in your calendar with a date and time. Now you are free to do other things until that day or time arrives. The second dangerous trend is deliberately separating business and family. We often bring the conventional business workplace mentality of nine to five into our own small businesses. When we worked in the corporate environment, we have that nine to five mentality. And when we're home, we're home. We thought of work as work and family or pleasure as separate. But we tend to forget that we chose this business because we enjoy it. It's our passion and purpose. So this business should actually be a pleasure. At the same time, when I ask clients if they practice their sales pitches and signature talks on their friends and family, or if they have explicitly asked family and friends to promote them on their friends' social media pages, or if they have asked family and friends to make introductions or phone calls for them, the answer is, no, I have not. We make the mistake of thinking we are alone in this. We have previously acknowledged that we need staff. We are open to hiring a virtual assistant, a computer service agent, or a systems business coach. We already know we can accomplish more with a team. We also know that our family and friends want us to succeed. 
We know that many of our family and friends share our passions and interests. Why do we feel so strange about asking for their help? One of the main reasons we are hesitant to ask friends for help is because we assume that we are bothering them or backing them into a corner. On the other hand, there are some really fun things that you can combine with family and friends. Even though your friends may not be your target clients, they can still assist as part of your volunteer marketing team. If you have a systematic approach to online marketing and promoting, it will be very easy to ask volunteers to help. If you have your sales script documented, it's easy to have volunteers cold call your dormant clients to invite them to your upcoming events. If you have a pre-event marketing event scheduled with enough lead time, it's easy for your friends and family to get the word out to their network about your events. Another example for combining friends and business is to combine fun seasonal activities with your marketing strategies. As an owner of a martial arts studio, consider taking your younger students trick-or-treating in surrounding neighborhoods in their karate outfits. Have your karate instructors chaperone the event so that they can talk about your studio, answer questions, and give out brochures at the appropriate time. It's a fun activity for your current clients and it doubles as a great catalyst event for your business. It introduces your business to the surrounding neighborhood in a fun and intimate setting. This is just one example of a catalyst event for your business. The last dangerous trend is to keep doing the same thing that made you successful in the first place. Since this is so counterintuitive, it's the most dangerous. Yes, you are successful and you should be proud of what you have accomplished. But now you are ready for your next level of success. So continuing to do the same things in the same way will simply keep you in the same place. Do any of these thoughts seem familiar? Yeah, I need to hire a staff, but until then, I'll keep doing these things myself. Yeah, I need to do consistent marketing. Until then, I'll continue to write blogs and newsletters whenever I can. Yeah, I need to revive and reach out to my dormant clients. Until then, I'll continue to collect new client data. All of these strategies actually slow you down. If you keep doing the tedious things, you don't have the time to hire. The marketing advantage to blogs is the frequency and consistency. If you don't write regularly, consistently, and stay focused on your brand message, that time is actually wasted because it adds no marketing value. If you are not consistently connecting to the customers currently in your database, simply adding more names to the list isn't really growing your business. Creating effective systems allow you to automate, optimize, and delegate many of the critical pieces in your business. Once you have an idea of the right systems for your company and the way you love to work, you can consolidate your staffing resources. Your virtual assistant can now absorb the sales and marketing, the customer support, and the online marketing process. It's easier to delegate activities to volunteers and temporary personnel without fear of inconsistent quality or service. Once you have a social media process in place, you can easily take 10 minutes once a month to schedule regular postings throughout the month that are always consistent with your brand message while automatically collecting new client information. Hi. My name is Laura Lee Rose. I'm a speaker and author, and I'm an expert in time and project management. I help busy professionals and entrepreneurs create effective systems so that they can comfortably delegate to others, be more profitable, and have time to enjoy life, even if they don't have the time to learn new technology or train their staff. I have a knack for turning big ideas into on-time and profitable projects. At the end of the day, I give people peace of mind. It's easy to set up a discovery call. 
You can schedule a discovery call by going directly to my appointment calendar or email me at lar at laraleerose.com. A 20-minute call can change the way you do business.